Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the program. Today we're going to talk about um, Homo erectus and these new dates of when they last <clears throat> were walking the earth. Now, uh, when you think about Homo erectus, first of all, you think about how old they are. The earliest dates of Homo erectus go back roughly 2.1 million years ago. And then the end dates are all over the place. Um, I've read sources saying that they've lived up until about 800,000 years ago, which coincides with some sort of um, major uh, uh, catastrophe on the Earth around 790, 800,000 years ago. And then I've heard other sources say 500,000 years, some say 150,000 years ago. No matter how you slice it, that's a long period of time that they definitely were roaming the Earth. So there's this site in Java and about 90 years ago they excavated these skulls at, which turned out to be a uh, homo erectus skulls from here they they've tried dating them because this is 90 years that's about like the 1920s 1930s that they found this thing so they didn't have the the at the best uh, dating techniques at the time so what they did was they just dated the stuff around the area and what they uh, and then as the years went on, they tried dating it again, and then they dated it uh, one more time. They dated it again in the fifties, and then again uh, in two thousand eleven, I think. And they got um, a really accurate date, which I think is uh, pretty interesting. So that's what this article uh, goes over: is just kind of walking you through this this history. So the site that I was talking about is in Java, it's at Nandong. So here's. The site of the, here's like South China, uh, China Sea, here's Australasia, Australia, uh, and um, here's Java down here. The Nandong site is way down here on Java, it's the northern part of the island, and it's next to this river called the Solo River. One thing that I noticed was it's west of the Wallace Line. So if you guys look at this, if you guys see here, this is the Wallace Line here, and what the Wallace Line is, it was noticed by a scientist named Wallace uh, some time ago, and he noticed that everything west of the line was one type of fauna, and then everything east of the line was another type of fauna, more uh, Aust uh, Australian type of, uh, a mixture of Asiatic and uh, Australian type of fauna, whereas in the west it was purely uh, Asiatic. Pretty interesting stuff, and the fact that Homo erectus is right here, like right on the border, really close to the Wallace Line, uh, makes people wonder whether or not people were able to cross the Wallace Line back then. And um, the Wallace Line is known for uh, really turbulent water as well. The depth is way different. Even in the in, during the last ice age, all that water was still there. It was still as deep as it was because it's almost like a giant trench. So this Wallace line here has been a barrier to humans for time immemorial. So I thought that was really interesting as well. So these, uh, the Homo erectus fossils they found here are the most recent known specimens dating from between 117,000 and 108,000 years ago. That's really interesting. Um, these are the most up-to-date uh, figures that have come out. And I think if this is true, then there's a whole can of worms that are open now because they were contemporaneous with some of the Denisovans, uh, the Neanderthals, and other uh, hominids or, or hum uh, uh, members of the species Homo during that period. So, and that includes the Hobbit people, that includes um, uh, Homo Luzonensis, if they were existing back then. I did another video um, regarding Homo erectus and how fast that that island uh, warping as that, that either, either, okay, when something lives on an island, either they get really big or they get really small. So Homo erectus, allegedly, they went to these islands here, like the islands of Flores and Luzon, and they shrunk. Their, their stature went down. And I did a video about some, a team of scientists that, um, wanted to test how long does that process take and what they found through simulations and, and algorithms and all that. Um, and if you take, you can take that with a grain of salt or not. If you think the algorithms are bunk, then you're totally, uh, you know, within your rights to, to do so. This isn't gospel. I just thought it was an interesting, um, headline. 
So they run these tests and they find it only takes about 8,000 to 10,000 years. Um, so it's an X number of generations before the, the population predominantly uh, portrays those smaller dwarf-like traits, hobbit-like traits. So anyway, um, I'm kind of burying the lead here. So in 1931, these Dutch archaeologists, they unearthed 12 skulls and two leg bones of Homo erectus. Um, so they found 12 together, so that's insane in, in and of itself. Um, the ones at Nandong that, that, that they found, compared to the other erectus schools on the island, have the largest brain size and highest forehead of any of them. That's very noteworthy um, because... It, why would they be distinctly different from... Because it's not that big of an island. Why would they be distinctly different from the other Homo erectus fossils there? Unless either A, they weren't Homo erectus, that they were some other type of human, or they had some sort of gene um, some genetic marker, something unique about them um, that set them apart from the other uh, Homo erectus, or they were just from a different time period. Maybe the other erectus fossils were a lot older. Maybe these young ones... Um, that during that span of time, they kind of evolved these high foreheads and large brain size. But either way, it's peculiar. And these are this is a picture of of uh, the skulls in question here um, in, in a cabinet somewhere in uh, University of Iowa, I think. Um, this indicates an important evolutionary change, and knowing when it happened is crucial to our interpretation of understanding these ancient cousins. That's true. Um, not only that, also who they were talking to, who they were intermingling with, and does this have anything to do with the peopling of either Africa or Australia? Were these people going from east to west? Were they going from west to east? All of these things are still up in the air. And if we find that, it's conceivable now to find the answer to those things now that we have this, we have a reliable date for these, um, for these schools. Um, and I think, it, again, we're coming closer to whether or not the, the large mass migration of people, which way were they going? Was it a large mass migration or was it a more of a trickling effect over thousands and thousands of years? We still don't know. Um, the fossils were buried in a deposit of sediment close to the Solo River. So that's why it was um, difficult back in the 30s to determine how old they were. So they relied on the estimated age of the, of the associated fossil fauna to um, hopefully date the remains, but that, as we all know, that's very faulty and, and, and there are a lot of holes in that type of dating. So 65 years later, uh, 1996, um, they did electron spin resonance and uranium dating, and Carl Swisher applied these techniques to, not, not to the um, humans themselves, but to the buffalo teeth at the site, and from there he got the 27,000 years age. So that makes it way younger than we thought. And there's a lot of contradictions with that age because that's when Homo sapiens was already in the region. Um, they would have overlapped and there would have been, um, it, it just, w there would have been way more evidence of, of those two mingling. So the, a lot of people had issues with that date. So later on, it was revealed the buffalo teeth that Swisher used to come up with that 27,000 year, year ago date came from an area that had already been excavated and buried again. So th those were not reliable dates. So, <clears throat> so that means they're, they didn't come from the same layer as the 12 erectus skulls. Thereby, they're not related um, because they're taken out and put back in. So in 2011, that's when they came, uh, it was revisited uh, by an Indonesian researcher, Eddie Indriati. And he redated the site between 130 and 500,000 years. Again, that's a huge window, but he's starting to narrow it down here. Um, he, he focused on dating non-human fossil evidence and, again, ignored sedimentary context. And that's an issue because um, just for um, self-explanatory reasons, if it's not found in the same strata, then most likely they're not the same age. It's just basic geology. Another team, Indonesian, American, and Australian researchers, led by Jan Rizal, tried a different approach. They had to understand that the site is in a river deposit that is part of a sequence of floodplain steps called terraces. Okay, that once they established that, 
Um, they wanted to focus on how the Solo River system was actually created, like from a landscape contest, context, how the terraces were formed, and how the fossils were deposited. So these three contexts, they wanted to get those down and then try to extrapolate from there how best to date everything. So they dated when the southern mountains in Java were formed, and then they dated the sequence uh, of river terrace sediments using a technique called optically stimulated luminescence dating. So it's a form of luminescence dating where you can get, without um, uh, so much organic material, you can just date based on um, the sun's rays hitting whatever it is that they're dating, which provided the first ever sedimentary age for the site. So they established... They just redated the entire sediment, and then they went in and and uh, checked which part of the, the strata that the 12 schools were found, and then did the date from there. So they excavated more. They selected areas using maps from previous ex excavations. The new excavations revealed the same bone bed found by the Dutch in 1931. Okay, so they found they found they've reached that same layer where they found the fossils. And then they found evidence directly associated with human fossils that could also be dated. So what they did was they analyzed these things. 52 new ages were modeled to precisely define the age of the original bone layer to 117 to 108,000 years ago, the age I mentioned before. And this is the youngest reliable age for Homo erectus in Indonesia. Now, what does that mean? Well, that means they would have encountered many other types of humans human species such as the Denisovans um, and the the Hobbit people that I mentioned before and even and perhaps maybe some humans that we have yet to identify and we know for sure that they're out there we know for because we have their DNA we just can't um, pinpoint where it comes from so this new age range now uh, raises important questions about the interactions between Denisovans and the uh, Nandong Homo erectus so if we go back here if we zoom out now we know 108,000, as early as 108,000 years ago, the Homo erectus was still alive and kicking and most likely um, having their unique culture and intermingling with other cultures of humans here. And we also know that the Austronesians, that's Papua New Guinea, the Solomon Islands, and Australia, they carry a, a Denisovan mar genetic marker. Okay? And then... You know who else holds that genetic marker? If we go further east, m select tribes in South America. They also have it. So now we know all this stuff, and now we know that Homo erectus may have had something to do with it. Because remember, Homo erectus, they found all over China. They found in Israel and Saudi, uh, what's now Saudi Arabia and the Middle East and Northern Africa and in Ethiopia as well. So... So what, what does this mean? This probably means that for the better part of, at the very least, a million and a half years, Homo erectus, or no, no, I'm sorry, two million years, <laughs> for the better part of two million years, Homo erectus had pretty much, it seems anyway, from the fossils, pretty much free reign. They were ubiquitous all along these, these, two con these three continents. So um, what what was going on back then we don't know but we're getting closer to the truth homo erectus had something to do with it um anyway let me know what you guys think about this if you uh if you've heard anything else about homo erectus if you have any um any uh not prophecies uh, any predictions any uh anything that you've read that helps um paint this picture of what what homo erectus's role was in our development um whether directly or indirectly um what what about the denisovans what do you guys think happened do you think they were just co-mingling the entire time do you think homo erectus was just one large part of humanity that ended up branching off into other part like neanderthals and and denisovans and such um and homo floresiensis do you think they were just intrepid explorers here do you think this do you think this was uh the one of the centers of homo erectus communities and and their the, uh, where they're living or is this more of a fringe intrepid group of explorers uh, just trying to branch out and and colonize um, new land anyway let me know what you guys think uh, the next I have a huge interview coming up my first interview that I've that I've done on this channel will be going li live and 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 will be posted uh, 
in a couple of days here, um, unless something something unforeseen happens. And I think it'll be pretty interesting. It'll be a change of, of what I normally do uh, in these episodes. Um, I have a, a bunch of questions I want to ask and very little time to do so. So um, I'll t- stay tuned for that. And again, leave a comment, like, share, subscribe if you haven't. And I'll see you guys later.